Hey, hi Suraj. Hi Kishori. Kishri, sorry. Uh, welcome to the session. We'll be starting the session in a couple of minutes. Thanks for joining. Venkatesh will be join. I mean, we'll be starting by four one. Okay. Okay. Absolutely no yeah. issues. I guess a lot of people will start joining from four o'clock. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely no issues. Hi, Shrikar. Uh, thanks for joining the session. Sir, let's, we can start the session now. Uh, let people uh, keep joining the session. And as the session is also available on YouTube, if they miss a little, uh, little bit, they can uh, also watch on YouTube as well. Perfect. Sure. Uh, so do you want to start? Or yes, I, I'll be I'll be starting. I'll be starting uh, in a uh, yeah ten seconds of time. Hi all, welcome to our webinar session on AI. This session is brought to you by Insofi. And welcome to our speaker, Dr. Venkatesh, the president of Insofi. So before beginning the session, I request all the attendees to ask your queries in the chat, chat option for sure. He'll be, once he's done with the session, Mr. Venkatesh will try to answer all your queries. Sir, over to you. Thank you very much, guys. And first of all, thank you very much, Topper, for giving me these opportunities. I hope everybody can see and listen to me, right? So first of all, good afternoon. Thank you very much for attending it. So I would like to, uh, what should I say, say welcome to both people who are attending the, uh, the Zoom session and also to the folks who are going through on YouTube. So both of you, welcome very much. Give me one minute. Let me share my screen and then we can start, guys. Can everybody see my screen? Right? Can everybody see my screen? Hello? Yes, Vengatesh. Okay, perfect. Yes. yes, perfect. Okay, so first of all, I have the title slightly, you know, sort of, you know, I wanted to do this, right? Does AI stand for artificial intelligence or augmented intelligence? And what it is, let's talk about it in the entire talk. I don't want to see. Artificial intelligence versus augmented intelligence. And at the end, I'll spend a couple of minutes talking about that. And, you know, is it what? Is it both? Same, both. So first, let me spend a minute introducing myself. And then uh, we can actually, one second, sorry. Mm -hmm. So my name is Venkatesh Sunkat. I'm the president for InSofi. What the, so my education background, you know, basically, if you look at it, my education background, I am not a data scientist or I've not done my, you know, a PhD in you know, AL, AI or ML, but in you know, basically undergrad, master's and my PhD has been in wireless communications. 
So I did my undergrad from um, India, Bangalore, actually from where I'm speaking from. Did my master's in the US, PhD from US and my MBA. Both my master's and PhD has been in wireless communications, not in AI or something. Spent about you know 20 years in US, came back to India. I was the vice president for Vodafone in uh, Mumbai. Spent three years there, came to Bangalore. Again, I was vice president for a company called Mobilium and I joined in Sophie in 2018. So it's nearly about coming this May, it will be about four years. So my interest is in the way I learned artificial intelligence, got a lot of interest in it. My main focus is basically industry 4.0. I talk a little bit about that and IoT, which is an internet of things. And, you know, so that is what is my main uh, thing. So that's enough about me. As you know, basically, guys, if you have any questions, please put it in the chat. At the end of the session, I will not take too much of my session. I'll try to finish it as early as possible so that I can spend as much time as possible answering all your questions. So any questions, do not hesitate. Just start typing in the chat and I will try to answer it as much as possible. With that, let's start with why are you folks here? The way I'm understanding, and I may be, you know, because obviously I don't know each individual of you. So overall, I'm assuming a certain things. Let's see why are you here. Most of you, I'm assuming, are either do you, some of you have a bachelor's degree. Maybe I'm sure some of you have a master's degree. Some of you are in the final year of your bachelor's degree. So you have like basically, you know, 12 plus 4 or 12 plus 5, whatever, right? That amount of education you guys have. Some of you are here also could be working. Maybe you have one to two years of experience or maybe a little bit more. But that is sort of, you know, that's where, you know, sort of your demographics of most of the people are here. And I'm sure there are one or two exceptions or maybe more than that. But, you know, most people sort of, you know, are here. The reason you have come here about us is because either you must have heard about uh, data science and, you know, or computer science engineering. And you have sort of, you know, hey, you want to learn more. Yeah, you're passionate about it in terms of, hey, I want to pursue my career in it. And that's one of the reasons why you wanted to come to this talk to understand, hey, what is this data science about? What is this artificial intelligence and everything about? Next, also you wanted to see, you know, hey, is there a possibility for me to get a real life exposure to data science? What do you, or artificial intelligence, what do you mean by that? Is there a program where I can actually get a real life experience that will help me either, you know, that program could be like a pathway program, like a master's program, or it could be like a certificate program. Doesn't make a difference. Is there a way for me to learn data science so that A, I can improve my, basically you want it for my higher studies, or B, it could be for a job. And that's one of the reasons why you guys are here. And some of you may be working already and you say, hey, I want to enter into data science. How do I enter? How, what is the training do I need to get into data science? And lastly, what is your aspiration? You may want to start, your, you want to become a data scientist, a machine learning engineer, or a data engineer, or a data engineering, or whatever. Right? So that is your passion. So this is why we are all here. And let's talk about each one of it at a little bit of a time, you know, during this uh, presentation. And I'll try to cover each one of the points as much as possible. And if you still feel I've not covered any one of it, or if you have questions, please make sure that you ask me in the chat. Now, I will quickly start with, you know, see, you always want to learn the future and the present. You always need to know the past because that's very important. And if you look at the technological revolutions, right, and I'm sure a lot of you must have listened to this, a lot of you may know about it, but I just want to spend a minute about this, you know, to say there has been like sort of you know, four technological revolutions that have changed the way we think or the way technology has improved. And each one of these technological improvements or revolution has sort of, you know, uh, jumped or leapfrogged the technology or the way of, uh, uh, you know, the entire human generation. The first one, I call it Industry 1.0, that is basically the steam engine. So the steam engine basically helped until that point, the people who produced and the people who consumed had to be close to each other. Steam engine was the first time when you know people who produced and the people who actually, you know, what should I say, uh, consumed had, can be at a very far place because the steam engine or basically the, the engine or the train that pulled the, uh, the train, the steam engine could take goods to far off places. The second one was the invention of electricity that revolutionized because now you could work 24 by seven, technically, right? And also this mass production. So people could actually do a lot of mass production. 
The third one was the electronic revolution. What I mean, this was the transistors. This was the IC revolution. This is when the personal computers, your internet, your cell phones, all of that was uh, basically invented or you can say, you know, created. And that basically led to a humongous amount of data that was being to be created. And so people started thinking, you know, how do I start connecting this data so that I can understand, get some lot of value into it? How do I start now generating more data in a very automated way? And all of that has led to something called an industry for auto. And that is where the concept of artificial intelligence, this data science, internet of things and all come into picture. This is where, you know, at this data that's been generated, how do I make sense out of it? For example, if I have data of somebody's buying patterns, how do I make sure next time he or she locks in that I can do a recommendation to say, hey, buy this product? Or if this person always has this, you know, what should I say? Buy. Basically, if they have a problem or if they, you know, have a particular service, let's say in your broadband, next time you call, how do I make sure based on the usage pattern, I can say, you know what? Hey, this person needs a better service or a lower service. How do I, all of that is basically the concept of using AI our data science, and then generating automated data using Internet of Things is what is at a high level is called industrial revolution. Each one of this revolution, I can you can see right, 1974 it started, 1870 it started, nearly 100 years and all, a little bit less than 100 years. This is something you know. In another 100 years, you can say 1870 to 1970. Now, if you look at you know what should I say, this one. Uh, Industry. So one more thing I wanted to talk about. What is this data, data, data we talk about, right? How is it generated? What does that mean to say data generation? So I have a quick example. This picture basically shows about Vatican City. I'm sure all of you know about Vatican City. This is basically people are waiting for the Pope. So basically they're waiting for a new Pope to be nominated. The new Pope will come out in the balcony. That's not the important part. The important part is, as you can see, it was in 2005. People have some cameras, right? Some digital cameras. They're waiting for it. The same thing got repeated in 2013. This is 2013, 2005, 2013. Everybody has a smart device, whether it's a phone or iPad or whatever, right? The concept is the moment you get a picture, what do you do? You start sharing, whether it is in a, a, a YouTube, either it is in you know whatever, right? WhatsApp, either it in Facebook, wherever. Every time you do that, you generate data. Every time you do a digital transaction, you buy something, you sell something, you take a ride, you search something, you generate data. And that is how data is generated. These are all human generated data. Similarly, there's a huge amount of machine generated data. A lot of you must have, have smart watches. Every time you go, it says you know, how many you know, steps you have walked. And then it loads them to a server, right? Or some cloud. That is machine generated data. Every time it will tell you your heartbeat is that, your pulse is that, whatever, right? That is completely machine generated data. You are not putting the data into the, in the watch or whatever device you have, right? Fitbit, watch, whatever you want to call it. That is machine generated data. That's all part of the IoT. And that's how the data is generated. The moment data is generated using techniques to actually understand and get benefit, what should I say, patterns or you know, out, or useful information from the data is all artificial data science is all about. Data science. Data is the generation part. Science is applying that and hence the word data science. Now, I just want to talk about the industrial revolution for auto a little bit so that you understand what it is and why it is. One of the things that you know I wanted to talk about, again, a little bit about data. I have a small video. Let me play this video and see if you can this says how much of data, and this is a little bit of old information. It's about three, four years old, but still it will give you the, how much of data is generated in one minute on the internet, one minute on the internet. And let's play this video guys. And hopefully tell me you guys can hear this. Yes,
it is tremendous. So it is a tremendous amount of data. It's one minute on the internet. And it is 24 by 7 because when we are sleeping, somebody else is generating the data. And when they are sleeping, we are generating the data. So it is 24 by 7 this data is being generated. So that is the amount of data I generated. And this all the data, so it's, there is no dearth of data that you can think about. The question is, how do I use it? How do I use it intelligently? And that is where, and this data is in all fields. It's not just in e-commerce. It is in e-commerce, transportation. Everywhere you go, this data has been generated. Now, let's spend a minute about, you know, this fourth, the fourth industrial revolution. As you can see, each one, people say it started in 2007, and that led to the entire, this AI and everything, and I'll talk about it in a minute. Do you know what happened in 2007? If you guys can type it in the chat or question mark, you know. Uh, what do you think 2007 happened? What happened in 2007? Don't Google it or something. Obviously, if you Google it, you may get one or two answers. I'm not, they don't do that. Just tell me, do you think, do you know what happened in 2007? Anybody? Okay, Surprise, want to speak. Surprise, you can also uh, keep a message in the chat. Guys, come on. Uh, crisis. Just from Surprise. Anybody? Doesn't make a difference. I'll, I'll wait. A market crash, crisis. That's 2008. Not 2007. Good point. Excellent point, Sarfraj. But it's slightly one year minus plus. It happened. Your 100% rate might have a little bit started, but the real crash happened in 2000. Recession. Exactly. All that in 2008. 2007, what happened? Okay. Let's start and see what happened in 2007. Remember, oh, yes, this is, it is a recession. Okay. Fantastic. Have that word that happened in 2008. Have that. Important. Let's see what happened in 2007. Let me first start with this. At the end of the, in the starting, let's go with the beginning of 2007. January 30th in the Moscone Center in San Francisco, a guy with a turtleneck and the jeans, and I'm sure everybody recognized that guy called Steve Jobs, introduced to the world something called iPhone. This was the first time the world saw a phone completely different. Until that point, they were so-called smartphones. Then there was iPhone. And the computing power of iPhone was more than the computing power of Apollo 13 that went to the moon. But that was not the main thing about iPhone. Yes, the computing power was there, but it created a revolution. How? It created this concept called apps. It created this concept where every information can be accessed and you don't need to have that information at your fingertips and you don't have to go to 200 sites to get it. One small app can basically get some information to you. So that will happen. Then what else happened in 2007? Let's see. Facebook was launched in 2007. 2006, actually, it was started in a dorm in Harvard. And then 2007, it came out to the world. In 2007, actually, a company called Twitter was started. In 2007, the sec I think the most important software, one of the most important software what today we call it, you know, for our AI and big day revolution is called Hadoop. I don't know how many of you know Hadoop. Hadoop is basically, when Google created its thing, Hadoop basically, and they put their software, which they call it big data on the uh, freeware on, you know, for free out. Hadoop took that when it was a creation of, uh, what should I say, Google file systems and a couple of other software and created something called Hadoop, which is now, used by 80% of the companies in order for their big data strategy. The second biggest software, I'm sure most of you must have heard it, or you know, some of you may not have heard it, what makes cloud possible started in 2007 called VMware. VMware is what makes virtualization today available in the cloud. And that virtualization is what makes cloud the most attractive in terms of the technologies that has come up. In 2007, one of another company, which you must have heard of called Git, Git GitHub started. GitHub is the largest depository of software in the world. In 2007, basically, 
uh, Google bought a small video company, which today we all call it as YouTube. In 2007, three design students went to a conference in uh, San Francisco, and they had carried three uh, sort of air pillows because, and they saw that nobody, all the hotels were filled. So they actually leased out their three air pillows and they got an idea, wow, if I can do that, why can't I use homes or some people homes to do it? And so that's how Airbnb was started. In 2007, Google started an alternative operating system to Apple and they called it Android. And today, 80% of the world phones, 85% in fact of the world phones run in this operating system called Android. In 2007, Amazon actually released its first e-reader. And as we know today, it's called Kindle. In 2007, IBM Watson actually went live in terms of you know, their processing power. That's not it. In 2007, if you look at it, the solar energy, right? If you look at the curve, look at just the 2007, the hockey stick, the capacity just went up because the technology improved. In 2007, the cost of you know, sequencing a human genome because of all these improvements, as you can see, it just dropped. It started with a billion dollar or a million dollars and hundred million dollars in some cases. And today, less than, you know, hundred dollars, hundred to hundred and fifty dollars, you can get your entire genome of your body sequenced. And that is what the power happened. And 2007, you see, is the way it started dropping. 2007 was the first time Intel used non-silicon based material for their chips, for their ICs, because they still want for because that's how only they could keep up the Moore's law. What is Moore's law? Moore's law says in every 18 months or 24 months, what do you think it is? That you know it doubles, the capacity doubles. In 2007, and if you're familiar with the natural gas production in US, right, it just, because frackling was something that was invented in 2007. In 2007, Michael Dell, who had resigned from his job as the chief executive of Dell two years back, took the company private and came back as the chief executive. 2007 was the first time, 2008 is the first time we have public data for cloud computing, which means to say 2007, obviously, right? if you have to have data, you have one year, right? You, you In 2008, you can't have 2008 data, right? 2008 means you have to have 2007 data. So that's when the public cloud started. You can see 2007 is when the cost of the data and the megabit has actually, you know, coinciding. And this is what happened. 2007, Google actually released something called Street View. In India, it is not there. But if you are familiar with that, just go to Street View. And it is one of the, basically, it's not just your Google Maps, but it will tell you how the street looks like. 2007 is when the first time Netflix switched from its, uh, what should I say, DVDs into streaming. So they said DVDs don't work anymore. Earlier they used to actually ship DVDs to your homes. They said they went into streaming because they saw that the cloud, everything had come up so much. They said, this is when I have to switch into streaming. And 2007 had the first, and you know what? History repeats itself, guys. Today, you know, this is happening. But 2007 was the first time a cyber attack happened on a, you know, a sovereign country and Russia was responsible for it, for Estonia. Obviously today's situation is, you know, everybody knows what's happening, but 2007 was the first time Russia actually a recorded first time officially, they actually at cyber attack a country, first cyber attack from a country to a country and Estonia was the thing. This is globally. Let's see what happened in India in 2007. Two kids said, you know what? Geo started in 2007, one of the, and obviously everybody knows what Geo. it started in 2007. In 2007, two kids said, you know what, if Amazon can do it globally, he can do it in India. And today we know it has flipped that. In 2007, you know, the fashion, probably one of the biggest fashion sites in, in India, probably, you know, Mantra started. Inmobi, which is, you know, basically the ads company, if you know the mobile ads company started in 2007. 
So 2007 is basically like the rocket start up, you know, the thing for the fourth generation. So many technologies came together and that's what makes industry for auto. It's not one technology. It's not just artificial intelligence. It's not that, but this entire story that makes it. But as you guys know, if I say 2007, you only remember one thing, recession, but actually it happened in 2008. But you know what? You only remember that thing. Unfortunately, no, no, nobody remembers this. But 2007, remember this in this like little bit of a history, is the birth of your industry for auto. Now, what is all, is all about this artificial intelligence? What does that mean to be artificial intelligence? And what are the jobs available and everything? I'll talk about it in the next 20 minutes. But before that, I wanted to say, one of the big applications of artificial intelligence is called NLP, Natural Language Processing. So basically, this video I have, actually talks about how real time you can do a conversion from language A to language B. Listen to it and then we'll talk about a little bit on and off. Hi, can you guess where I live? Te encuentras en America del Norte? Yes. Do you live in Central Mexico? Sí. Te encuentras en Estados Unidos de América? Yes. Do you live in a capital city? Sí. ¿Estás cerca de Seattle? We're very close to Seattle. Are you in Mexico City? Sí. ¿Estás en Tacoma? Yes. Very good guess. Gracias. Thank you. So there's a life you happening, like guys, in using artificial city? intelligence. Te gusta vivir They're actually en la lively de converting from you know, language A to language Here B. Is very nice. What do you do for fun? ¿Qué haces para divertirte? Voy a las playas de México. I'm going to the beaches of Mexico. I like to swim. Me gusta nadar. A mí también. Me too. Where in the world do you wish to travel? ¿A dónde en el mundo te gustaría viajar? A Rusia. To Russia. ¿Y tú? And you? Everywhere. <laughs> Sería increíble algún día verte en México. It would be amazing to see you someday in Mexico. I would really like to visit you sometime. Me gustaría mucho visitarte algún día. A mí también. Me too. <laughs> I just, you know, I'll move it. So basically, as you can see, real time when people are speaking from English to whatever, right? English to thing, it's actually being converted using, you know, something called that. Now let's get into what is data science. And there is two fields that you need to be aware of. Data science and computational data science. And let's talk about a little bit about it. And then I will talk about it, right? So do you understand what needs to be done as a student? What are the opportunities and everything? We'll talk about it. First thing is data science. If you are interested in basically, you know, to get into pure data science, what does that mean? If you're learning and you're interested in, you know, basically, you know, doing, you know, understanding, basically getting information from the data, understanding that, then data science is basically has three components. One is called programming, and I'll talk about it a little bit. One is called visualization. Basically, how do I display the data using, you know, there are software to do that. Third one is the actual algorithms and the models, which is called machine learning, statistics, and deep learning. So these are the three components that are needed for you to learn data science. And I will, a little bit, each one of it, I'll go in my next slides. However, if you're not interested so much about, you know, more about, you know, for example, cloud technologies, how do I actually, you know, basically get the data? How do I actually uh, modify data? How do I actually set up the data? Then it is called computational data science, which is basically a little bit of computer science and engineering. And also, then you'll also have to learn machine learning, science and programming. But the main difference is basically, in one case, a lot more, you know, a model development and, you know, sort of, you know, presenting the data. The other one is more of, you know, understanding the data, more of, you know, gathering the data so this is sort of the two you will hear going forward data science and computational data science. now at a high level you may say so what what do you require for anybody to be a good data scientist and for that basically there are two things one 
the domain knowledge is very important and this is something you know you may get that knowledge you may not get that knowledge but domain is something important because where do you apply data science or where do you apply artificial intelligence you're applying in healthcare field you're applying in finance field it could be in any field right e-commerce so that way which domain is also important the second thing is you need to understand it how do i apply it for business and there is a lot more importance there because the problems that you are going to choose are going to be very business specific. And so most problem in business, they speak the language of business. So you need to convert a business problem into a data science problem. And that is something also important, you know, and that is something very, very important for your kids. With that, you know, basically, what do you need to succeed in data science? I come up with this, you know, I call it talent. T-A-L-E-N-T. Everybody knows that word, right? Where T-A has been divided here, L-E-N-T. T-A means your technical ability. What are the things that you need to learn for a data science? What are the things you need to learn? Basically, your basic math, as you can see, right? Very important. Then your basic statistics. Basic, you know, analytical tools, which are your statistics. You need to learn. Good should be good in statistics. Second, there is certain amount of machine learning that you need to learn. Algorithms and things like that. Programming, very, very important. You, If you want to be a good data scientist, especially on a technical side, you need to learn programming. There are two programming languages, guys. One is called Python, one is called R. You need to sort of be good in both. Then you need to learn something called data visualization. And next is called model development. One of the things, let me tell you, and this is very important, not everybody in data science is somebody who needs to be an expert in programming. There are a lot of jobs in data science who doesn't require any programming thing or things like that. They require what is called a very important thing is basically understanding the topic so that you can kind of take a business problem. So somebody says, hey, my sales are down. Take that problem and convert it into a data science problem. So there are a lot of non-programming jobs also, but you still have to go through the basics of data science to understand that. And so don't think that you know, I have to be an expert programmer to be a good data scientist. The second part of how to succeed as a data part is the LE part, which is called the language expertise. What do you mean by that? The soft skill. Soft skills are very, very important, guys for you to succeed, which means to say, you need to learn how to present your data. How do I do presentation skills? How do I work in a team? How do I you know, have leadership skills? And so all those soft skills are also very important for you to come up in your career. So I call it language expertise. Third one is MT stands for networking. What do you mean by networking? Networking means doesn't mean it's a computer network, but networking means in order for you to get your job, how do you create your profile? How do you make sure that your profile stands out in everybody? And there are, so you need to have a digital or what should I say, persona of yourself. You need to make sure that you participate in, you know, you sometimes, you know, so basically make sure that, you know, you study comment, you have to go into make, make yourself a LinkedIn, this one. Start reading basics about it. I'm not saying you need to be an expert. And then, you know, people write something. If you like some article, start commenting on it. That way you start developing slowly, especially if you're a young student or, you know, you've just started your career. Start following people whom you think you know are good in their field and start questioning them, commenting, hey, I think it's good. And that way, slowly you build up that networking and that helps you in your career. So basically, for you to succeed in data science, you need talent, technical abilities, and I talked about it, language expertise, and networking. T-A-L-E-N-T. That's called, that's a, I, this is by acronym and this is how I have divided. I'm sure a lot of people, end of the day, it's all this, it's all these three need, people may say it in different ways. I have done it this way, T-A-L-E-N-T, talent. Now, what does that mean? And now let me spend, okay, you told me that I need my technical skills, you told me I need my language skills, you told me I need my networking, fantastic, but how do I get it? Where is the one of the best source to get it? What do I do that? And that is where I'll spend a little bit of time talking about in Sophie, what programs we offer and things like that. So first of all, INSOFI stands for International School of Data Science. International School of Data Engineering, so International School of Engineering. So INSOFE, International School of Engineering. And we are an organization that offer, basically, let me tell you, we have about 20 full-time professors, seven adjunct faculty, about 50 full-time data scientists. We have professors from one of the top universities in India, guys. 
from you know if you can in the world if you look at you know carnegie mellon university of texas iits in india iiss in india my phd for example is from university of colorado so, so there are some really top university but that's not what makes insofi unique what makes insofi unique is as like i told you my career right all of you guys how basically we make sure that you know all of our professors have at least 20 years of experience industry experience and why is that important for you to learn data science it is very important that you basically learn data science in a practical way data science is not a theoretical subject you it's not like i tell you theory and you walk away you need to have a lot of hands on you need to have the right problems to solve and that is where the professor you know having been taught by professors who have industry experience make a difference because two things happens one they bring that industry experience in the classroom in addition to that especially in insofi all our professors you know basically do corporate training and consulting in fact me if you look about it i do a lot of corporate training why corporate training is important corporate training tells me what the industry needs i can bring it back into this why do i do consulting the reason i do consulting is because that helps me to understand first of all to keep my skills up to date and that also understands me what problems that the industry is facing and we bring that problem back into our uh, what should i say curriculum so the labs that we do are actual problems that we see in the industry 80% or 70% of them 30% obviously we have our own problems combination of that because now what happens is when you work on a problem it's not some theoretical problem or a problem some industry abc stuff you know actually so now you know how to solve that and that is what it is in addition to that we have four products we actually have a startup within insofi called bitcoin which actually you know basically it is you know coinnet we have a startup in uh, uh, what should i say insofi called coinnet that actually uses blockchain technology and so that startup is within that and we have about 75 plus patent and one startup okay this is who we are now what do we offer that's the second part we actually offer from what should i say bachelors to doctoral programs in partnership with universities in india can uh, europe and usa we offer basically for our bachelors program we offer btech in artificial intelligence with a bsc and vijay boom and you know be in computer science with a vijay boom university if you are interested in your masters program we offer both in india and abroad where we as you can see with the case western nmims university of strathclyde that is on the engineering side if you are say you know what i have done my engineering i want to do my mba what we do is we offer in conjunction three masters programs one with ren school which is one of the top business schools an msc in data and business analytics one with the walsh college in us and one with you know sprout uh, which is the uh, what should i say carleton university which is one of the top public universities in canada the way these programs work is very simple the first term or the first semester you do in india learning data science then you go to that uh, let's say canada or us or france or wherever and you learn the uh, what should i say the domain part why is it important because data science just equals both the domain and the technology part of it and we have made our programs in such a way that if you don't want to do an engineering program hardcore program our business pro what should i say business analytic programs are such a way that we you don't have to do a lot of programming we make sure that you know we use tools for that so that you don't have to be a this one but if you want to do a lot of programming you can either join that as there's a lot of other options that are available to us i don't want to go through all the options and everything but as you can see similarly we offer two doctor programs one doctor program will very soon start with uh, uh, what should i vijay bhumi university the other one is a dba with ren school and we have about believe it or not right now 62 students who are actually going through a dba program which is a doctoral program so this is at a high level guys what options we do so the reason i'm giving you this options is because not because of this but this is what you know insofi can do for you and this is what you know is very important because you need to have hey this is my career if you don't want to do any one of your masters or our programs but you say hey can, is there a certificate program so that i can do that immediately go go for a job we actually have three certificate programs one is called pgp in data science which is a standard data science thing 
PGP in computational data sense, I told you, right? More of the cloud, the big data that we will add in addition to that. And then PGP in business analytics. This is for people who don't come from an engineering background, non-engineering background, who don't want to do a lot of, but it's a certificate course, which is about a six month course. You can do that and you know immediately, you know, and we have one of, I would say, probably also really strong career services that can help you to get jobs. Now the question is, what types of jobs are available out there? If you look at you know, the field, and I have certain, you know, this is from LinkedIn. What types of careers are available for data science folks? And it is very important that you understand that what types of careers are available for data science. One of the things that if you look at for you know, data scientists, data scientists, the good news is can be used anywhere, in any domain. It can be in finance, it can be in healthcare, it can be, you know, there are need for in every industry. There's a need for data scientists. There are need for you know people both with you know business and data science knowledge, with pure data science knowledge, with pure engineering knowledge. This is from LinkedIn. They said these are the top jobs that are available, highest paid jobs in 2021. AR, VR engineer, ML engineer, big data engineer. You can see right. These are all data science related. This graph actually talks about, and this is something you may guys be interested or not interested. Just to give you a clue. Generally, when people do PhDs, right, other than, you know, data science or artificial intelligence, everything, 90% of the time when people do industry, they go into uh, what's academia. If you look at this, right, 90%, most of the people who are doing their PhDs actually are actually going into, what should I say, academia, not academia, but industry. What does this tell you? This tells you that industry not only is going to hire at the, every level, there is a huge demand and there's a huge opportunity for data science. This is my last slide and I wanted to talk about this to just to let you know that data science is being used everywhere. And I wanna give you an example where I think it's the last thing you think that data science is going to be used. But I look at this video and then I will questions guys. And the speaker needs no introduction. I'm sure all of you know that. And this is a, something they used to have had. Now they don't have it, unfortunately, called Global Business Series in Mumbai. I attended two of them. They used to get the top speakers in their field. And they, the speaker obviously needs no introduction. Please listen. So I have five points to make about what I think, how cinema of the future is going to be affected, what changes will come through. And I would like all the businessmen here to listen to me carefully, because this is the main part of my speech. And if you understand this, you'll make loads more money. <clears throat> First of all, with the advent of digitization and a thing called big data, there is going to be a lot of changes in how we consume cinema, how we watch it, how we critique it. But mainly the change is going to be how we market cinema. So last night I was with my friend uh, Rajan Mittal and Ajay Bijali. And Ajay was very disturbed because he owns this big chain of theaters where he was talking about the fact that, listen, no footfalls are coming into cinema theater. But whatever we are going to lose out in the conventional sense, we are going to gain in terms of attracting more eyeballs through big data. So that's going to be the big business of the future as far as cinema is concerned, especially in a country like ours, where uh, we are still have a huge untapped market in uh, digital consumption. The second change that is going to happen is that there is going to be a radical movement away from the content itself. Movies are going to be shorter, I think. They will be without intervals. And instead of stories being based on geographical, physical geographical boundaries, they're going to be based on more social and psychological geographies. Because everybody will be available, talking, exchanging ideas on the, on, on the digital world. And because of this flow of ideas being uncontrolled and going on as it is, anyone can make a movie in the future, What's going to happen is even big production houses are going to suffer. They're going to completely break down. Power will not be vested in the hands of you like me, or I won't name other uh, production companies. I just mentioned myself, but all the other production houses, because there will be a more democratic process via which you will understand the demand for the kind of cinema, because the audience will straight away send you a feedback like it already does on Netflix. Also, I've mentioned this before, instead of all of us waiting for money or taking loans, what is going to happen is there's going to be a lot more crowdfunding. The third change that is going to happen is between the viewer and how we watch the film. 
that is going to be a big change right now whenever movies attract us it's a momentarily a momentary uh, uh, catch of emotion or an experience but soon movies themselves will become the experience they will be interactive you will sit down you can change the endings you will be able to change the characters you can watch different films your children and your family uh, while watching the same film you can follow different storylines all this is uh, going to add of course value to entertainment and how you're going to watch it but these changes are really going to radically change everything that you believe in and so for example by the time i do don 6 yeah or <laughs> no i i i'll tell you you know ki wo police ka gyara mulkon ki police don ko dhoond rahi hai abhi budda ho gaya police mein kahan isko old age home mein dal do and you can you can change it one 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 request i'm going to do to my friend uh, salman khan i love him but jab uski agli 33rd version of tiger zinda hai aayegi aur jab wo 2000 crore rupaye kamayega to main usko pad jaunga paun aur bolunga bhai tiger ko zinda rehne de retire ho ja please so we can change all that uh one other thing that is going to happen honestly is uh, i think artificial intelligence virtual reality and uh, uh, visual effects all these are going to become so on and so forth guys i don't want to play the whole thing guys can but the idea is you know last person you expect to talk about this is you know obviously shahrukh khan right but these guys see, see these guys are also business they see the future So cinema is somewhere you may think, oh, AI can never come into that. It's coming everywhere. It is coming. So what I'm trying to get here is a field that you may think, you know, what is the last thing that maybe it's one of the first fields to get into the AI business. So AI is everywhere. Jobs are everywhere. There are lots of lots of jobs. The question is, are you prepared right? Do you have the right training? Do you have the right what should I say? Um, training and the techniques to do that and that is where choosing the right organization makes a huge difference sure. so with that i will end my talk thank you very much let me stop my share and i will definitely go and you know open my uh, the thing for questions um so i would just like do you want me to read that yes please if you can read the questions that would make my life yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> So from YouTube, uh, a subscriber have asked which business are using AI currently now. Can you give some random examples? Exact every field. So for example, starting from when you book your uh, what should I say from your maps that Google uses for you to get the optimal route to when you book your ticket, you know from you book your uh, cab in Uber to for example when you go into you know Amazon or Netflix to the recommendation engine to for example. Now, if you look into supply chain, what to buy, when to buy, all of them are using, you know, uh, yeah. Hope, hope he got his answer. And uh, machine learning, data science, algorithm, fusion logic, artificial intelligence are all different, or it comes under same branch. It comes under the same branch, which is slight difference. Unfortunately, people have used multiple things. There is a slight difference. I'm not saying it's all the same, but. at end of today it it comes under the same big umbrella okay uh, so next question uh, do a fresh up and join ai roles like job roles with the without any uh, training maybe like she is asking directly a uh, can a candidate join directly from a college it is tough you can obviously if you can you know learn on the job but the question is is the company ready to hire you and also it is tough obviously see anything is possible let me be honest with you i can never say no right anything is possible but chances are less but if you have the training company feel a lot more comfortable like for example can i start architect can i do be an architect without studying architecture yes nobody is stopping you right you can be an architect you don't have to study architecture to be called yourself an architect right anybody can start saying i have i'm a but number of people doing that is less okay um coming to the next question can a non coding candidate get into ai i am from electrical background uh, um, i mean i am a uh, electrical background candidate without much coding no, uh, knowledge i guess definitely yeah. do ai is also for me definitely in fact ai is for everybody doesn't mean see the question is the question i want to ask you and if you can you don't have to answer now but i'll just ask you do you like coding if you like coding you gone for example institute like insofi we start from the very beginning guys we never assume that you know coding 
So that is something is for sure. We start from the very basics. So we have people who have never done coding in their life. They come and in fact, they do great coding. So the question is not the question of, or do you want to go jobs where you don't like coding? There are a lot of jobs in AI. So for example, you know, as I told you, right, there are a lot of jobs where you, you need to understand the, you have to be a, like a translator, they call them, between the actual data scientists and the business people so that you can translate, take the business problem, convert it into a data science, take the output. So there are a lot of non-programming jobs in uh, data science. If you want to do those jobs, definitely. Or if you think, you know, hey, I want to get into coding, yes, definitely. You can do both. Okay, Venkish, like most of the questions been uh, answered. Like, I guess a couple of comments also from BCom candidates, especially on YouTube. Do BCom candidates also uh, can apply for AI? Uh, definitely. Especially maybe like if they are going for any training. Exactly. So the question is, you can apply. But what I would say is, if you don't, I'm sure you have a math background. But if you're not, if you see, that's the reason why we have a program called PGP BA for a certificate program, business analytics, where we never teach you hardcore programming. We teach you data science through tools, which is point and click. So you learn data science through a different way, but it's as effective as anything else. So it depends upon your interest and everything. Yes, BCom students can definitely learn uh, your data science. Okay, uh, most of the questions been answered. I'm just saying, guys, come on, like if you have any queries, please uh, raise it right away. Uh, will answer for all of your queries. So there is a Q and A here, which is our country has already unemployment, but robotics and AI will add more burden to the crisis. Please justify. And this is from Salim Mohammed Gundru. Excellent question. That brings me to the topic. I don't know when you joined this, Salim, and that's an excellent question to bring up. Is AI stands for artificial intelligence or augmented intelligence? I asked you that question, right? I believe AI is augmented intelligence. What do you mean by that? That means to say it is not going to basically remove your jobs. It is basically you still need humans. Nobody is going to say it, it helps in order to enhance your production. It helps. So it's that's the reason why I said the domain knowledge will always be with the human. So that is A plus B is always greater than just A. And that is what we are looking at here. So augmented intelligence is what AI is all about and not this, you know, matrix vision of, you know, something, you know, different. That's, that's the movies. Truly today, AI stands for augmented intelligence. Augment means you're adding to your intelligence. Um, hope, uh, Salim, you got your answer. And almost like Harsh's question is also like that, like, uh, should I build uh, my future in AI if I'm not belong to CS Definitely. background? Definitely. See, as I told you that AI can build any, what should I say, field. There is nobody stopping you. The question you have to decide is, do you want to go into traditional programming kind of an AI or non-programming? Both options are available. Yes, Vangresh, like most of the questions been answered. Uh, guys, like, do you have any more questions? If not, I think, you know, one more thing is, I think we can go into our website. So Rohit, if you can put www.insofi.edu.in is our website, guys. And I'm sure, you know, we can add that. And also the contact person is Rohit. If you have any questions or comments on any one of our programs, we would love to talk to you and definitely, you know, make sure that, you know, you contact. So very, very simple. Insofi.edu.in. Obviously, that is our and Rohit is the person. Please note down this. And this will also be, I'm sure, you know, when you put our YouTube, I think we can also put a link to our from when you go, you know, basically publish it in YouTube. Well, we can also make sure that we can put a link from our uh, social media sites, right? Sure, all the details also will be available on YouTube description very soon. So candidates who are watching on YouTube and who are watching through direct webinar, they can always go for freshersworld.com YouTube channel. And again, they can watch this entire uh, session. And if you want any dedicated phone number or link or email ID, you can please check the description of the same video also. So guys, like, do you have any more questions uh, on a quick note? Any Anyone? other questions just, or I'll comments, just... guys? Uh, uh, Gautam has a question. Yes, please go ahead. Uh, hi, my question is when 
yes uh, you, i mean uh, he is asking about the new session i mean uh, the date of new session for master of data science course definitely so i think you know mahesh the best thing is you please contact either rohit i think the number is here they will walk you through the entire thing so please note down this number that you have here and the email address please contact rohit and i'm sure they will walk you through the entire your options and everything definitely they'll walk you through Please note down this. Please go, Gautam. Oh, oh, Gautam, like you have, you had your answer. He's from YouTube. Okay, let me just go. Okay. Yes, we are like most of the questions being answered. Like, okay. do you want Perfect. to discuss any, any, any point? Um, uh, like any education. If you don't have any other questions or comments, I would definitely, guys. I'm just last. Round any questions or comments? Okay. You have no, no questions as of now. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Hey, thank you very much, and also thanks the our YouTube viewers. Thank you very much, guys. Hey, have a nice day. Um. Uh, so that's all, guys. Hope you had an informative session. Uh, from us and in Sophie, you can also see this session on YouTube and post your queries over there as comments. And for sure, we will try to get back to each each comment. And uh, thank you all, and thank you, um, Doctor Venkatesh sir. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you for joining.